Hello everyone, I'm Bruce Beck. Welcome to Nightlife, a new program showcasing Rutgers athletics and all the elements that make it tick. Today we're talking football, basketball, soccer, and much more. And we begin at the birthplace of college football with the 150th anniversary celebration. Rutgers participated in the first intercollegiate football game. Rutgers is the birthplace of this great sport. Priest to a backyard battle with Princeton in 1869. Won by Rutgers, 6-4. So much excitement and pride right here on campus. This is such a, a special place in college football. It's amazing being at the birthplace of college football. A lot of people can't say that, you know what I mean? Like from other schools, like this, it happened right here at the birthplace of college football. The birthplace is a big deal. You know, this is where football started. You know, it's where it originated. I mean, it's pretty crazy, you know, it started here. So, you know, you kind of go back to it and you know, look at the history. Rutgers is where it all started. And to be able to wear that block R every Saturday really means a lot to all of us. Wearing the same colors, wearing that R on your chest and representing for Jersey. Sometimes you really like, don't really take it all in. And I finally took it in like a year ago. I'm like, yo, football really started here. College football was here. Having that, you know, behind you is something that you can kind of, you know, brag a little bit to about people. He is sacked! Yes! And the Scarlet Knights win it! There is pandemonium in Piscataway! And one night in Piscataway, New Jersey. Whenever I put the helmet and shoulder pads on, you know, I'm kind of uh, represent every single buddy who's played before me. It's just with me, like I can tell from my kids and my kids can tell their kids. So I love it. Knowing that where, where it all started means we have to give that much better effort and put on for the people looking out for us. Oh my goodness, wow. what a win for Rutgers. Wow, what a game. To think that this is the birthplace of college football, it's, it's a tremendously important thing for Rutgers University. Love talking Rutgers football with Chris Ash. And as you look at this team this year, what do you expect from this group, Chris? Well, I expect us to go out and compete um, and play really hard. I expect us to focus on the process, and that's our day-to-day -day operations of just uh, practice and meetings and getting better as we go through the season. That's the most important thing to me. With guys like Pacheco and Blackshear, and Bo Melton, do you feel you've got some components out there who can, guys who can make plays? Uh, yeah, I, I feel like we've got more guys that can give us some big play um, potential than what we've had in the past. We've got a lot of work to do and we've got to see it consistently as we go through the season. When you talk about leadership, you've got four captains. What do you think of this group overall? I think they're, they were great choices by the players uh, to start. Um, I think they represent our football team on and off the field. They're some of our better players. They're some of our better charactered individuals. And I think they're very well respected in the locker room from all the teammates. And uh, that makes their leadership um, you know, really filter throughout the locker room. People are going to listen to what they say. What about Raheem Blackshear, the fact that he can make it happen on the gridiron, as well as talk to these guys in the locker room, does that add a component? Does that add something to it? Yeah, absolutely. I think every coach would like to have their best players be their best leaders. And Raheem is that. He's uh, the one of our best players, one of our best leaders. He's one of our best students in the classroom. He's one of the best citizens we have on our team. So he's the total package, and people are going to listen to him because they respect him. What about Tyshawn Fogg? Do you see some ferocity from him? Yeah, you know, uh, he really got his first start last year when we played against Michigan State. He played a great game against Michigan State. Uh, he really picked up uh, on Friday night where he left off you know, from last season. So he's only, only going to get better. He's a very smart player. He's a tough player, and he's a great leader for us on defense. Zach Vineski, you're talking about smart. I always go to the offensive line. Yeah. Those guys are usually the best sound bites. Does he show something there in terms of leadership? He does, and it really is because of his work ethic and his toughness. Uh, you know what you're going to get out of Zach every single day. He brings his hard hat and lunch pail to, to practice every day and is just uh, scrapping and grinding to get better. Tyreek Maddox-Williams is from a place where the lunch pails are known, Philadelphia. Does he give you a balance about the defense in that regard? Uh, absolutely. He's kind of like uh, Zach Maneski. He just shows up every single day to work. He doesn't say a whole lot. 
he's not afraid to uh, get on his teammates and make sure that they're upholding the standards that the, our, our team has set. And I've really been impressed with the growth and maturity that I've seen out of Tyreek from the time he got here to where he's at today. Do you welcome this difficult schedule? I know it can be awe-inspiring in some regards, but it's also a phenomenal opportunity. Uh, it is. We look at it as opportunities. I mean, this is big time college football. If you don't want to play a difficult schedule, don't be at this level. That's what it is. Uh, the Big Ten is always going to be difficult. I don't care if you're East, West, you're at Rutgers or Ohio State. It's always going to be a difficult schedule. And that's what we signed up for and that's what we want. And we embrace it. And there's tons of opportunities because of it. And finally, Chris, what's your message to these kids in terms of academics? Because you've had a lot of kids over the past few years who have excelled in the classroom and on the gridiron. Yeah, we really want a team that's going to show up and compete on the field as well as off the field. Uh, we want guys that take a lot of pride in their on the field performance, uh, but more importantly, the performance in the classroom as well. Uh, we, we really are believers that uh, you know football is going to set you up for the rest of your life because of the lessons you learn on the field, but because of the, de the uh, degree you get also from a great university like Rutgers. Coming up, an all-night access into the women's soccer program, this week's top plays, plus a men's basketball trip across the pond. Need to see the doctor but can't get there? Download the Telemed app from RWJ Barnabas Health and see the doctor right away. Whenever you want, wherever you are. No matter who you are. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Hey, everybody understands the foundation items on both sides of the ball, right? Play good football. Everybody attacks. Everybody defends. I know we're a better team today than we were yesterday. We have great leadership from our captains and our seniors. They've spent so much time on our core values and the team dynamic and created an environment that is healthy for learning and where you can come and be the best player that you can be and know that your teammate, your sister has your back. And from that environment, I know that we're gonna be better tomorrow than we are today because that's the culture that they created. They come out every day, they get better and better. One touch, good and hold, hold. Yeah, the times that you're losing it is that ball's being knocked and it needs one, but we're seeing it just a little bit too late. Okay, so see it a little bit earlier. You're good, play. When I first started, it was 20 years ago, and I came in as the assistant for Glenn Crooks. The first thing we did is we looked at the roster and we looked at the number of Jersey kids we had on the roster and we looked at the number of players that we felt that we can count on. And to us, we didn't have enough of that. That was the first thing that we needed to do. We needed to change the culture. And, you know, that's where we started. And we feel that, you know, 20 years later, we feel that we are in a good position, you know, but you still have to work at it. And we ask a lot of our players. Um, but I think the most important thing is that there's culture here is that you come in every day to get better. That's non-negotiable. I think the big piece of that is we have to enjoy what we do. You know, so we want them to compete, but we want them to do it with a smile. That's, that's important because we're not gonna have success unless they're enjoying what they do. And that's in the classroom and that's on the field. To be a good program, you need to be consistent in all that you do. And these last seven years have been the most consistent in the 20 years that I've been here. And a save made, Rutgers is on to their first ever College Cup. For the past seven years, you know, we've been in the NCAA, so we built a solid foundation on character and talent and hard work. We've really developed a program that wants to be successful, that wants to rep represent our university at the highest level that we possibly can, because we're proud, you know, to be um, here at Rutgers. Very proud. This one drilled towards midfield. Get it back out by the Blue Devils. Played by Rutgers. Sent up ahead. Mira Ali trying to chase it down. And McQuillan came out to play it. Ali intercepts. Ali's got a wide open goal. She shoots and scores! Ali in the pouring rain, her second goal of the game. And the Scarlet Knights 
win their season opener as they go to 1-0 on the season. We just knew that we had to push through. Um, this is what all preseason is all about. We work our hardest here. We get our fitness in just for these types of games to be able to play the full 90 minutes and plus. So that's what we did here. We stuck together and we got it done. Tennessee trying to clear it out of their own end. And Rutgers putting on the pressure in the early moments here. Half number two is a pass in. Shot score! Rutgers breaks on top. It is Brittany LaPlante. Um, it's a feeling that I can't really describe. Um, only being able to play limited for the past past three years, being able to come out and play full full 90 almost. Um, it's really a feeling I can't describe. Um, and I've had the greatest support from my teammates around me, pushing me you know, to get back where I want to be. So it's a really great feeling. Intercepted by Rutgers. Good defense. Scarlet Knights carry up ahead. Here's the shot. It bounced in and bounced out. So Rutgers gets the first goal. A great shot by Katie Lamore, the redshirt junior from Ireland. Remember, she only played one game last year coming off of an injury. Here's the shot set up to the side and score. It's Lamore who puts it in. Yeah, I mean, it's good to be back. Um, I've had a tough two seasons with injuries, um, but my knees are good and I'm ready to just keep going. Here's Hertz. It'll be Maximova for the win. And the Scarlet Knights get win number one of 2019. Rucker's been able to keep her quiet. That serve goes long, and that's the match. The Scarlet Knights open up the Rutgers Invitational with back-to-back -back wins. Virginia fighting for their lives right now. And it's over. The final kill from Maximova. And the Scarlet Knights have won the Rutgers Invitational. Of course, it means a lot because, like, uh, I'm sophomore, and first um, year I didn't play that much, and now it's like I'm MVP, and I'm like so happy, and like, yeah, I'm gonna improve, and like every game, so yeah, I'm so happy. He flips it towards the goal. It is punched out, and then the rebound, score! Well, this is very close. The question is, did he beat the buzzer? I mean, literally, Glenn, that was kicked as the clock was hitting zero. So Rutgers takes the lead, three to two. Final five seconds. Rutgers will go to four and zero oh on the year. The Scarlet Knights defeat Binghamton by the score of three to two. Great start for Jim McEldry and the Scarlet Knights. Yeah, I was happy to, to get the win. I thought uh, there was moments in the first half we played really well, and then uh, there was moments that we weren't as good as we wanted to be. So uh, we've got a lot to work on, but I uh, can't fault the effort and the commitment. Our guys battled hard and um, you know, just happy to, to get a win at home. Y'all, feel like family now. I know everybody more than I did. I knew, I know you more than I knew you. Two weeks ago. Are you scared? Are you scared? Are you scared? Yo, yeah, I can't do this, man. <laughs> <laughs> That jet ski was crazy, bro. Caught some waves, caught some jumps. Boy, Shaq. Yeah, man, that jet ski life definitely is a life.
Time for In the Huddle with Hobbs as we talk about Rutgers Athletics with Pat Hobbs, who is the Director of Athletics on the Banks. Pat, 150 years, the birthplace of college football. Tell me about the year-long celebration. Well, you know, you, only one place could be a birthplace, right? right? So we're the birthplace of college football. We're very proud of that. When you think about what's happened to this game, this great game of college football, and to be the place where it all began, Princeton, of course, first game was a win. A lot of folks don't remember, but for Molly Marcoux, my uh, counterpart down at Princeton, we went down to Princeton and lost the second game. Uh, so uh, the series was 1-1 after the first two games of college football. Um, but it's important, right? So we talk about this great game. We talk about the impact it's had on this nation, uh, on the, the impact it's had on the lives of thousands of young people who've had access to college as a result of the game of college football. So we'll celebrate it all season long. We kicked it off this past weekend with some nice uh, celebrations. We had a new statue unveiled. Uh, commemorating the victory, the, the victory statue, and we importantly got a victory. That was two years in the making. That statue really has come to the fore here. No question. So Ron and Joanna Garuti two years ago came and said, listen, we go to these campuses and we see these mascots and they're in front of stadiums. They're out in a public space where people are taking pictures. Wouldn't it be great if we had one here at Rutgers University? And of course, we do have the old time football player. Uh, that's part of the Scarlet Walk. But a, uh, a Rutgers wide statue. They wanted something that was inspirational and aspirational, both academically and athletically. And, and going back to 1869, we had a reenactment of the first game over the Marco Battaglia practice complex. That was awesome. It was tremendous. And, and I think the, the young folks from our theater uh, program who did that reenactment, they were probably in as good a shape as the first football <laughs> players. Uh, they certainly didn't look like our team today, uh, but it was great for the kids to do that and, and get out there in the field. And these are important. These are important um, commemorations of what we've done, and that's going to go see all season long for us here at Rutgers. Tell me about the 1869 Legacy Award at the 50-yard line dinner. So we had the 50-yard line dinner, and the, uh, the 1869 Legacy Award was established six years ago to um, honor folks who've really been committed to the success of Rutgers Athletics. And this year was Bob and Harriet Druskin, who shortly after my arrival here uh, gave us a gift that was allowed us to do a new strength and conditioning room over at the rack. Uh, they've made commitments to the Big Ten build. Um, they're all in with Rutgers. And so it was a special night. We got a little bit of rain, but it didn't uh, dampen the mood or the night at all. Uh, and we were able at the end of the night to give people uh, tours of our new football locker room, which of course was a gift of Greg and Anna Brown, that's last year's 1869 uh, award winners. So that's a $4 million celebration, so to speak, of a new locker room, which kids really want in today's day and age. You have to have it. If it went, uh, shortly after I hired Chris, I had not seen any of our facilities when I took the job. And so when Chris and I did that first press conference, I said to him afterwards, we're now gonna go out and take a look at the facilities here. And one of the first things we did was walk into the locker room and, and it was just, it's not Big Ten quality. So we committed right then and there that we're going to seek a gift to do a new locker room. And the reaction by our kids has been off the charts. And that's important because our kids need to know that we're committed to giving them the resources to be successful. The APC grand opening is something that's been talked about for a while. How important is that in the overall structure of things here on the banks? Uh, no question. So we're really excited about the opening of the RWJ Barnabas Health Athletic Performance Center. Thank you again to the folks at RWJ Barnabas Health. Um, their commitment to this made this happen. They want to bring best in class sports medicine to Rutgers University, and that's what we'll work on together. But it's going to house both our basketball programs, our wrestling, and our gymnastics program. So we go from having no basketball practice facility to one of the best in the nation. We go from having no gymnastics facility of our own to one of the best in the nation. And Rutgers uh, Wrestling, which has two national champions, was over in the barn in the basement in that sweaty, damp place and now they have a spectacular facility and you can already see the success we're having on the recruiting trail because those young people now see we're committed to success. And Pat, finally, what is the importance of academic achievement with these athletes, the true sense of the student athlete? Well, you know, that, that's Big Ten wide, right? So one of the th things that we'd say as a point of pride in the Big Ten is we are 
of the premier academic athletic conference in the country. And that is absolutely true here at Rutgers University. And I think a testament to that is the new uh, Gary and Barbara Rotkin Academic Success Center that's going to be built and folks arrived on game day and they saw steel in the air. Uh, that will be an 80,000 square foot building devoted to uh, the success of our student athletes in the classroom because most of our student athletes are going to play for four, maybe they're here for five years with a red shirt, and then they're going to go on to success in life. And if we're able to bring success in life to them, they're going to give back to us, just as the folks I've already mentioned today give back to Rutgers University. Good to be in the huddle with you. Good to be in the huddle with you, Bruce, always. For Pat Hobbs, it's all about the relentless pursuit of excellence. Thanks for joining us for the first edition of Night Life. I'm Bruce Beck. See you on the banks.